The liberalization of the telecommunications industry has led to some rapid advancement, which we are all witnessing today. However, industry watchers are advocating the need for more investments in order to be prepared for the next wave of technological advancements. Group Managing Director, IPNX Nigeria Limited, Ejovi Aror, joins us to discuss more. Uh, what's your overview of the ICT industry today? Well, the ICT industry in Nigeria now, like most um, of the remaining sectors, so is facing the challenges of the present state of the economy. But I think our bigger challenge is what has been fundamental with the industry for a very long time, which is where we sit in the entire value chain of ICT. By that I mean, how much value do we actually contribute as Nigerians to the services that are provided to our environment, to our, our people in ICT. If you look at it, for every dollar we, we spend here on the average, we we'll probably send out about 90 to 95 cents. In other words, we are mostly distributors of, our, of services from somewhere or the other goods, products and services from other countries. And um, there is also the general lack of support for the local entrepreneur who wants to generate and provide services by himself, especially in the software environment. And that has to change. You know, you can see a couple of um, people who are, should I say, trying Umatech, maybe Techno, you know, and on the software side, you also see smart trains, but they are very small compared to the total spend. You know, if we want to develop the ICT industry, we cannot stay as resellers. We have to move to down the chain and produce more, add more value, fundamental value. Mm -hmm. You know, and that may requires a lot of government support, a lot of investment, a lot of belief. You know, if not to perpetually be in a state where we are more or less just reselling other people's services. I think that is the, the fundamental challenge yeah, we but, have. But don't you think it's a challenge of um, policy? Because for countries like Ghana, our next door neighbor, and even places like um, Dubai, UAE, you have to get somebody who is an indigent to be part of the business. So that place, those places, policies actually drive growth in certain industries. Um, it's, beyond, it's beyond that. I agree, policy has a role to play, but a lot of this time, when you put structures like that, they end up being abused. Because what will happen is the guy, whoever XYZ limited from whatever America or whatever, gets a face to represent him locally to conform to the rules. But the radical value add still comes from out there. You have to have a policy that actually allows your people to develop the capabilities. I give an example of what China did. You know, a lot of people don't know this. But we see Google, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Amazon, we hear of all of them. Now, none, Facebook, none of them has a foothold in China. Because the Chinese government recognizing the strategic intent, the tra strategic import of all of this, they deliberately encourage local equipment of all these companies to be protected, and to develop. <laughs> so the money stays in China. <laughs> in fact, the money, the knowledge, the technology is all in China. So for the Google, you have Baidu. For Amazon, you have Alibaba. For YouTube, I can't remember the name. For WhatsApp, you have uh, WeChat. You know, you can name it. None of them has a foothold in China. That has economic, it has security, and more importantly, it has developmental implications. You know, because the way the world is going, those behemoths are going to dominate the rest of the world, including Nigeria. The Russians, too, are stepping up. The Indians, too, are stepping up to the plate. In Africa in general, and especially in Nigeria, which usually takes the lead, we need to step up and say, what are the things we need to do in order to ensure we don't perpetually consume products and services we are also producing? You know, and the gap is getting wider, by the way, you know. Let's look at the broadband plan that we once developed. Uh, are we still pushing that plan? Um, I don't think it's... I think the, the, the will and the intent is still there, but the fundamental issue is the economy. 
you know, the exchange rate is still not where people are comfortable with. Not in terms of the rates specifically as in terms of the outlook. You know, are we sure it's not going to move to 600, 700, 800 or whatever? It has it stabilized. In order to push that plan, you need investment. Investment will only come in when people are reasonably sure that they can plan ahead and see where they're going to get their money back from, you know. Moving to 4G is the next big step we have to take. Um, and we need a lot of investment in fiber backbones to an infrastructure. Very little of that will happen as long as there's this uncertainty as to the future of the economy. And I think that's the biggest um, obstacle that we have at the moment. Is right of way still an issue? Right of way is an issue, but remember that's a local problem to the environment you are working in. Um, and um, I know that there are various, in various parts of the country, you know, there are various challenges you have. But there are things that we have to talk to the various local authorities on how to resolve. You know, and I know, for instance, that the Lagos state government is working on solving that problem too. Um, and I'm sure it's the same, same in other states. So yes, it's an issue, but it's something that's being worked on to, to resolve. Uh, a, a lot of Nigerians are complaining about the quality of service. Um, they say that instead of it to be improving, it's, it's going down. What's your view on that? Well, I think um, there are different uh, areas of industry you need to look at separately in terms of that. Uh, you have the mobile infrastructure and the fixed network um, infrastructure. I think on the mobile side, it's been flowing and airbeing in terms of um, um, quality of service, and that's something the GSM operators have to address. On our side, which is mainly fiber optic based um, infrastructure, the quality of service has been rising up steadily, mainly because most of the challenges we had related to road construction and the accidental damage, we have better ways of handling those now. Um, the government's been very cooperative, telling us ahead of time before they do construction on the roads. We also have better response time in terms of reacting to accidental uh, uh, damage, and that's upped our, our quality very, very much. But in terms of the mobile infrastructure, I think there are challenges that the operators still have to address. Big organizations and complex industries around the world are using the cloud technology to cut costs and provide more efficient services. Is the technology seen as the next big thing? Finally, everyone is going cloud, but, but I, I keep wondering if we have a very robust framework for supporting development in cloud services and cloud infrastructure in Nigeria. Not actually. The, the, it's, not, it's not so much a policy framework as much as a strategy, you know. We, I don't think we've actually even thought about it, but the cloud has the potential to probably perpetually widen the gulf between the producers and the consumers of IT services. When you take your device, whether it's your phone or your tablet or your PC, and you use a service, whether it's Google, Mail, whether it's Office 635, whatever cloud-based service, most 99% of the time it is in one data center in the US or in Europe. Now, all the knowledge and technology to make that happen is residing there. Now, we are seeing a shift towards cloud-based services. Most services in another five, 10 years will be cloud-based. The knowledge is out there. We are just consumers. Now, so we pay them for these services. They get more money to invest in research. The gap widens further. We don't produce anything. And then to make matters worse, they still use that money and pick our best brains and take them there to even contribute to making the gap wider. And they're leveraging the technology in various other areas beyond just the internet and services. The thing being, we actually need a strategy to actually make sure that we as Nigeria, the ICT industry, develop this capacity to be able to do that. So I guess it's a wake-up call for us all. Yes. Thank you for being on Techless today. Thank you very all much. <laughs>
This edition, as well as previous ones, can be seen on the channel's TV YouTube account or via my blog, techsmart.ng. Merry Christmas from all of us at Channels Television. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukomeka Agbata.